second time out of all these years of mission work that uh, I've become drastically ill uh, because of some food poisoning, but uh, you can take all the precautions you want, <coughs> and sometimes uh, that's the way it happens. Amen. But uh, I'm thankful for our team, yeah, yeah. Pastor Ziddy and my tight out of Brooklyn and Ron Taylor. One of the best teams we've had, and I thank Woo! God for them. And we had a glorious time. And, I, and when I left, I said this like uh, John MacArthur when he left uh, the Philippines in World War II. He said, I shall return. Amen. And so I shall return during the dry season. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. But God is good, He's faithful. Yes, he and I went to Liberia, and we are faithful, Amen. and uh, we just thank God. Um, I have a message today. Um, got home on the 14th in the afternoon, which was a Thursday on Friday, uh, <clears throat> midday. I went to the doctor to follow up, and while I was in the doctor's office, I received the word from the Lord. Amen. And I was reading a scripture, and uh, it's the text we're going to deal with today. <clears throat> and the question that uh, was posed to me, what do you do? Mm -hmm. um, uh, how do you handle the situation if what you're dealing with or what you're going through has nothing to do with your past, mm -hmm. your present, but more to do with your future? Well, yes. I think you missed that. 
And then it became more direct that uh, your illness was temporary. That's right. That's right. It was, it was, uh, it was not of you. It was, well. it was another nature. It was yeah. not, it was not of Satan. But it was of another, another call. It was a divine setup. I think you missed that. It was a divine setup. And the Lord said, read uh, Luke chapter 4. In verses 1 through 13, and read it in your leisure. I'm only going to argue from the first verse. Um, but uh, that's, I'm not going to get past the first verse. But, but uh, the first verse, actually the first verse, and the B clause of the second verse. But look for, uh, and I'm going to walk slow because I'm still weak from what happened, uh, amen, and I'm still in recovery mode, but my spirit is strong. Luke 4, verse 1, NIV says, Jesus, say Jesus, say it like you know it. Notice what it says, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Verse 2. Where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. i stop right there. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. Praise the Lord. A divine sitter. Luke chapter 4 is a passage well known to many of us uh, who uh, grew up in the church uh, the temptation of Jesus by the devil. Uh, we keep referring to the devil. The devil is real. Some don't like to realize it. The devil. We're facing the devil every day. Even the devil. Amen. Jesus had just experienced one of the most spiritually significant events in his life. Yeah. His public induction into the ministry signified by his baptism into the Jordan River. Now the Bible says the Holy Spirit descended on him in the form of a dove. And the Father, amen, God himself spoke from heaven uh, and said, you are my beloved son and you I am well pleased. And immediately Following uh, the baptism, the Bible says he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And then verse 2, we are told that for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. Now, this is important. I don't want you to miss, miss what I'm getting ready to say. Sometimes God leads us into the wilderness. Help me somebody. He, he don't push us. He don't drop us. He don't drop us off. He don't. Amen. He leads us into the wilderness. Sometimes our trouble or our difficulties are of divine origin. Say that again. Sometimes our, our trouble or our difficulties are of divine origin. 
Now, 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 Rachel, we tend to blame everything on the devil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would be in this mess if it wasn't if it weren't for the devil. All oh, the devil must be behind this. Come on, you said it. Sometimes we give the devil too much credit for the things that happen in our lives. But now God did not tempt Jesus. The devil did. Say the devil did. But the Bible says in James 1.13, God cannot be tempted by evil nor does he himself tempt anyone. The second thing is this. Sometimes we will have a willingness experience of merely, amen, following a mountaintop experience. Help me somebody. Amen. Following a mountaintop experience. Amen. Can I get a witness here? Jesus had just been baptized. Mountain top experience. He had publicly declared his ministry mountain top experience. And then in Luke amen, 4 and 1 he says he, he was full of the Holy Ghost. Mountain top experience. But it doesn't stop there. Read on. And he was led. Come on, y'all. I'm, I'm almost through. I'm not going to be here long. I'm not that physically strong today. Read on. And he was led, say led, by the Spirit into the wilderness. Do you see that now? Now, the devil didn't do it. Amen. The Bible says he, he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness for 40 days being tempted of the devil. Now, now what's the meaning of, of the word led? Help me somebody. Amen. Jesus was, was led by the Spirit. Amen. That, that arrested my attention on, on Friday sitting in the doctor's office. Are y'all with me here? Now, now, Saturday, a week ago, I, I was so sick at all Saturday night and all Sunday, I wanted to go to church to preach this last sermon. Help me, somebody. But I was so sick, but I, I, I couldn't do anything. But I, so I want to know what this lead meant. Help me, somebody. And God, amen, amen, wanted me to know that, that what I was dealing with was a, a, a divine sit up. It was of divine origin. Y'all not with me here. I'm going to help somebody out here. So, so what does this mean here? The Greek word used here, led, means in, I in. Which means Jesus was led not only by the Spirit, but also in the Spirit. I think you missed that somebody. Help me somebody. In other words, what you're saying, amen. He was led in the spirit. Step by step, day by day. Help me here. And what you're saying, what I'm saying, y'all want to know what I'm saying? He said a person must be in the spirit to be led by the spirit. Just a little more, Matthew. Come on. See, a lot of folk, amen, trying to be led by the Spirit, but they're not in the Spirit. Folk that create problems are not in the Spirit. Say amen. Folk that make issues for other saints are not in the Spirit. Amen. People that, that run other believers down and gossiping and homemongering and sowing discord are not in the Spirit. Say amen. So Jesus was, was led by the Spirit because he was in the Spirit. Jesus was led to be tested and tested. You see why trials, 
toughen us and make us stronger and give us greater assurance so that we can face whatever lies ahead of us. Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Now this word led, this word led, this word led also give reference to one who goes uh, ahead. Say amen. Or goes before. Look at the text. Look at the text. Jesus was led by the Spirit. Help me somebody. In other words, here go Jesus, but the Spirit went ahead of him. Mm -hmm. Say amen. In other words, the Spirit, amen, amen, already fertilized the wilderness for him. Y'all not praying. It had been the scout for Jesus in the wilderness. Y'all not praying here. Jesus, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. It signified not so much that he was led there as that he dwelt there. Say amen. And continued there. The Bible says, amen, for 40 days. He set up camp there. Are uh, y'all with me there? Amen. The Bible in basic English says, and Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, came back from the Jordan and was guided by uh, the Spirit in the wasteland. In other words, he dwelt therefore in the wilderness in the Spirit, which is spiritually. Yeah, Jesus was led to fast and pray. Some stuff you have to dwell in. And so Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, is led into the wilderness of desert for purpose. Say amen. In order uh, to challenge the devil. Mm. And if he had not fought, he would not have conquered him for you and me. So really, what was this all about? Anybody want to know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, here it is, Rachel. Well. Jesus was being prepared to launch the most important work ever prepared by mankind. Yeah. Yeah. Pastor uh, Mandaya, listen to what I'm going to say. Well. That name may not mean anything to you, but my pastor friend knows what I'm, who I'm, what I'm saying here. Yeah. I said, Jesus, Jesus. Yeah. But being prepared to launch the most important work ever performed by man. Two, th two things were involved in the preparation. Two things prepared in the preparation. First, there was God's plan. God's plan. And that's what God said to me on Friday. He said, He said, uh, He said, He said, uh, I set you up because I got a plan here. Jesus had to be totally committed to carry out God's plan no matter what happened. Are y'all with me here? God's plan was what? The cross. The way of sacrifice and the way of suffering. Y'all not praying here in order to help others. You see a whole lot of us want the easy road. We don't want no crosses and we don't want amen sacrifice and we don't want the suffering but uh, if you follow God's plan you gotta you gotta be able to suffer for the cause don't have a witness and I stop by to tell you I suffer lying in that bed now y'all with me here hey 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 but I stopped by to take God as able. But then the second thing to this thing here, amen, second Jesus preparation involved personal need for strength and assurance. Do I have a witness? Uh, for about 24 hours, I didn't know if I could live or die. Came a time I couldn't even pray. I was just so sick, I was so weak, I couldn't get across the floor. 
And you don't know how bad that is until you're in a room by yourself. Amen. A long way from home. Say amen. But how many know God got angels around? How I got a win? God had two preachers with me that looked out for me. He had a housekeeper. Amen. That, that saw I was sick and told the management I was sick. God got angels everywhere. Say amen. God got angels. Amen. The only way Jesus could be strengthened in his son was to be tempted. Say amen. I was tempted to give up. But, 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 but Jesus had to struggle. And you got to struggle in ministry. Say amen. We got too many folk, amen, what Cadillacs and, and Rolls Royces and Bentleys and mansions on a hill. But men, ministry is a struggle. You got to struggle with people's problems. You got to cry sometimes. Say man. Sometimes you get paid, sometimes you don't. That's what it is all about. But he set the struggle against the devil to become tough and strong. But the Bible said Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. It's a setup, I tell you. But now, for a few moments. Let me drop two things in your spirit. Uh, you got to learn how to experience the wilderness. So you got to learn how. Uh, to experience the wilderness. I need somebody here to pray right now. Because my body getting a little weak here. Can you all just stand on your feet and say a prayer? Uh, I need some help right now. Somebody say in the name of Jesus. You got to learn how to experience the wilderness. You see, the wilderness can be a frightening, intimidating place. Why? Because it's filled with dangers. It's filled with unexpected things. It's not a place to be by yourself. There are many hazards in the wilderness. You find snakes there. Scorpions and wild animals. Thorn plants and all kind of dangers. Have I got a witness? In Mark's account of the story, in chapter 1, verse 13, he said he was in the wilderness and he was with the wild beasts. Say amen. I start by to tell you, there may be times God will lead us into a wilderness and we be surrounded by wild beasts. I'm going to say something now. Not beasts in the sense of what the Lord experienced, but rather conditions or circumstances that have beastly characteristics. Circumstances that seem ready to devour us. People with beastly attitudes, beastly ways, beastly talk, beastly styles. Say amen. What hindered the church so much is beastly members. Say amen. That tear down rather than build up. When you try to advance the kingdom of God, they try to undermine. Say amen. When you go out with a calling on your life to build up and advance the kingdom, they try to undercut it. They're beastly folk. Wild beasts. That's what you're dealing with. The wilderness experience can be a tough assignment, but you're never alone. The child of God is never alone. Say amen. Don't forget that Jesus was not alone. God was with him. The Holy Spirit led him. Say amen. Matthew 4, 11 said, And behold, angels came, ministered him. The child of God is never alone. In that wilderness, do I have a witness here? Hebrews 13, 5, I will never leave you, never nor forsake you. Hebrews 1, 4, 14, are they not all ministering spirits? Send forth the minister for those who will inherit salvation. 
You got to learn to experience the wilderness. But that's something else. You got to learn to endure the wilderness. How did Jesus endure the wilderness? And I'm out of here. Say amen. Look what the devil did. The devil threw everything he had at the Son of God. He tempted him in every way. But yet without success. Come on, help me here. What was it that Jesus did that helped him overcome the wicked one? What are the things we can do to survive and endure the wilderness that come in our lives? Yeah, I'm glad you asked. Say amen. Man of God, help me somebody. Pastor friend, yeah, they started a new work. And they're trying to undercut you. Huh? What can you do? Huh? Do what Jesus did. Huh? Use the word of God. Huh? Say amen. Huh? Verse 3 and 4. Huh? The devil said to him, huh? if you are the son of God, huh? turn the soul into bread. Huh? But Jesus said, huh? it is written, huh? go to the word. Huh? That's all you do. Uh, go to the word. Huh? Man uh, should not live huh? by bread alone. Huh? Yeah. Say man. Huh? Yeah. Huh? If you want to have victory. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Against the devil. Huh? Then use the word of God. Huh? You'll find yourself huh? in the wilderness. Huh? Use the word of God. Huh? For Jeremiah. Huh? 23, 29. Huh? It's not my word like fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. Use the word of God. Verse 8, Jesus is written, worship the Lord your God. Use the word. Say man. Use the word. That's what you do. Use the word. It is written. I said it is written. It's a divine set up. He was led. He was led into the wilderness. And in the wilderness, you're going to encounter devils, demons, and wild beasts. They're going to tear at you. But you led. Say yeah. And he'll watch over you. Say man. But the 13th verse said it leaving you for a little while. In other words, you're going to win today. But he's coming back again. He's coming back. Not as a serpent, but as a lion next. He's coming back as a church member. He's coming back as a family member. He's coming back as a co-worker. He's coming back as a co-call friend. He's coming back to the value. But just go to the word. Say it's written. It's written. It's written. Say yeah. Say yeah. 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 God spoke to me on Friday. Oh yeah. He said, "What did you?" was a setup. Yeah, yeah. I told Pastor Zeddy, hey amen, that if I'd have been alone, I'd have pulled myself up. I'd have gone on to church. I'd have preached and they'd have had to scrape me up, take me on to the emergency room. But the ego stayed out the picture. I hate to drop this in y'all's spirit. I said I wasn't going nowhere the rest of this year. I stayed home. God 
God said this was about purpose. Yes. Sacrifice. Yes. Obedience. Yes. God is calling for people in this last day. Yeah. They can hear his voice. No matter what it looks like, don't take the time to look at the dollars and say, am I evil? But look at his plan and move with the shift. Ministries of sacrifice. What's killing us, and I'm an old man now, I keep saying that when I was in Liberia. I don't have time for these star preachers no more who want to be on center stage. Did y'all hear me? Yeah. That's what I appreciate about this team that was with me. No one was concerned about the star or the center stage or the, or the crowd. Everyone did their part. Everyone lift up Jesus. We haven't seen yet what God is going to do. This all again what God is going to do in Liberia. Y'all stay faithful. We're coming back. We shall return. We're going to fulfill everything we say. But I want to speak directly to Pastor Monday. I, I pronounce it different past the Monday because it's easier for me. My brother, to your wife and family, you stepped out on faith. I'm going to write you today and I'm going to talk to you this week. Don't be hindered or worried about the soothsayers. Whenever you step out by faith, there are those yeah. who, who tried to destroy. Yeah. Yeah. That's been since the beginning of time of the church. Yeah. 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 We all expect people to, to cheer and to push us on, but everybody who listed under the banner of Christianity, they're not, they're not in the spirit. In the spirit, folk help you. But I'm coming to help you. In the middle of last night, God told me to come and help you in a season that was unexpected. I'll be telling you about that today. God's plan. God's preparation. Pray for us. Still not physically where I ought to be, but I stood today by faith. Don't give the devil credit for everything. Shout out right now, wherever you are, the divine set up. Say divine set up. Praise our God. We thank and praise God for each one of you who prayed for our bishop while he was on the mission field. We thank each one of you who gave of yourselves 
your sacrifice. We thank you this morning. We give God the praise for you. And we pray a special blessing upon each one of you and your families and your ministries and what God has done in your life. We give God the praise this morning. There's so much that God wants to do all around this world because we're in the last days. Amen. And we ask that you continue to pray for our bishop. Pray for this organization. Pray for our churches. Pray for our ministers. Pray for pastors. Pray for members, workers, everywhere. Because that's what we do. We pray for everybody in the name of Jesus. We ask, oh God, that you will touch hearts this morning. There's so much that we need to do in Liberia. There are orphans and there are schools and churches and people need help. We even found out that sometimes we don't even, they don't even have teachers in the schools to teach the children. We want to be a blessing to the children and to the families in Liberia. Amen? We ask, oh God, that you would touch hearts. Go to Carol A. Baltimore Ministries dot org and you'll be able to give through Givelify and other uh, platforms. We thank you this morning once again for praying for our bishop and for praying for all the people all over the world and praying for this nation. Don't forget this nation. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.